Welcome back to Inside City Hall. We are here tonight with Elena Deutsch of the American Cancer Society and Robert Bookman of the New York Nightlife Association. Elena, what happens in your opinion, what should happen if a person refuses to stop smoking? If they refuse to stop smoking, they should be asked to stop smoking, they should not be served anymore by the establishment, and they should be escorted out if they are flagrantly smoking. It's the, it's the establishment's responsibility to make a good faith effort. And I think the Department of Health understands that they're in the hospitality business, they need to serve their customers. As long as the establishment makes a good faith effort and can prove that they did, they're not gonna get fined. Okay, what if this is a customer that just spent, uh, uh, let, let's say a reasonable amount is $100 and this person just spent 500 Look, the law and you're is, asking them to stop smoking? The law is the law, and you can't just because a customer is dropping a lot of money give them special permission. And I think other customers would really have a problem with that and would speak up about that. I really think customers are going to help enforce this. They can go to the city's website, nyc.gov backslash health, to report an establishment that's okay. in violation Robert, of Robert, I'll law. come to you in just one second. But is it fair, in your opinion, to find the owner only and not the individual smoker? Well, the owner is in charge of what happens in their establishment. But the person is in charge of what the individual well, will do. Well, they, they can choose to not serve that individual. They can ask them to leave. Okay. They can escort them so out. So now you have threatened to sue the city, I believe, if they issue tickets to your clients, the bar owners, the nightclub owners, and not to the individual smoker. Yeah, I don't will understand. You do that? Oh, we certainly will. I don't understand this hesitancy on the part of the anti-smoking groups and the government to enforce half the law. Um, you know, the law was designed to expand the number of locations where it is illegal for an individual to smoke. And the law provides for a penalty for that individual to be smoking in a location that the law prohibits. Uh, if we make a good faith effort um, and tell the person to stop smoking and they refuse and tell them we'll stop serving them again and they still continue to smoke, I think we have, we have met our responsibilities under the law. I disagree with Elena that it's then our responsibility to hire additional security to physically remove people from the premises. I didn't say that. That's, well, you said escort them out. That's not it. Well, that's the only you way to escort somebody out. But it would be required mm -hmm. to do that. If that's good faith, people will have to hire additional security. That's not our job. But uh, the, the main deterrent that we have available to us is that bartender telling the individual violator, if somebody comes in here and I get a ticket, you're getting a ticket too. For the city to insist that they're not going to enforce that half of the law to be supported by the American Cancer Society, I don't you are, I don't you are tying you our hands behind our back. I don't think that's a hospitality industry. I don't think that that's a hospitable way to treat your customers. Well, escorting think, them out is certainly well, not a hospitable well, then, way to treat but our then, customers. But then the customer is well, we're not, not giving them a ticket. in a responsible way. But we're not, Look, yes, the they Department are. Department of Health has a plan for how to enforce and this. And that plan is and to we, go after businesses to, only. But, Come on. But we have to give them that's a ridiculous. chance to enforce it it's as ludicrous. their plan is. And I think okay, they're willing to make modifications if it's not working. But, but how do you hold the business responsible and not the individual, not the individual violator. that's actually violating the law? You hold them responsible because they're, it's their establishment. And they're the ones who are responsible for the health and safety of their customers and their employees. And that's their job. They can't have asbestos tiles in the ceiling, and they can't allow secondhand smoke in the air. It is that's not our job to be police officers. It is the police's job to be police officers. It is our job to tell a person they're not allowed to smoke here and to create an environment under the law in which we are not winking at it, but enforcing it to the best of our ability. But, but you, as if they walk said, in, the law. If, if an individual but that's came the law in, as well. If an indiv individual came in and put drugs on the table, your clients would enforce that. No, we would not. We would call the police. But, but that's I mean, a criminal. That's, well, that's a criminal Mr. violation. Bookman, this I heard is not. Over and over this is again not a criminal from, violation. From your clients during testimony, that they did not want to have to call the police. That they didn't want to have to call the police because they get violations. That's they don't, correct. They are not going to want to have to call the police if a smoker is that's smoking right. there. They will deal with it themselves. We don't want to be put in a position where we're the only ones getting a violation for a, a law that somebody else is clearly violating against our wishes. And again, I don't understand their hesitancy in enforcing that law, other than that perhaps they're afraid of a, of a real public backlash if the, pub, if, the, if the illegal smoking public starts getting violations. I mean, that's the only political undercurrent I, really, I could see here. You know, okay. I really think... But we, we, we don't want to be in a position where we're getting a violations if we don't enforce the law, and we don't, or if we do enforce the law. You know, and that's, that's, and, that we're, and that, 
and that looks like we're being put between a rock and a hard place. We want the, oh, wait, the wait, Bloomberg wait, administration. Wait, 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 wait. How are you getting the ticket if you're enforcing the law? We're going to get a ticket in enforcing law because if we have dozens of people that we say you've got to go out into the sidewalk and it's 3 o'clock in the morning and they're smoking out there and they're, and they're talking and they're on their cell phones and people who live upstairs are going to call the police, the police are going to come down and they can't give them tickets because they're not doing anything illegal. But, but they're going to give us a ticket. But aren't the police going to say aren't you going to explain to the police that you asked them to leave? Yes, times. and the police will, to, to respond to those those neighborhood complaints, the police are going to give the nearest bar owner a violation of a disorderly premise or not having a sign up we or bartender cutting lemons without a hairnet or whatever right. other yeah, nonsense have, they can come up with. I've, I've got to wrap this up, but okay. are you willing to concede at all anything that it may hurt business as far as I these really guys? think we need to wait and see what's going to happen. I don't think it's going to hurt but business. But would you like to be in the position if you were a business owner and you had to have a wait and see approach on whether or not it's going to hurt your bottom line? I think we're in a wait and see economy right now, Dominic. There's no guarantees with anything these days. Okay, I thank the both of you for joining us thank tonight. You. It is time for Breaking Up Next. We'll hear from the men who want to succeed the Staten Island DA. A deputy barrel president announces candidacy today. And later we'll get your thoughts on everything from the Yankees cable vision deal to the budget and the war. We'll open up the phone lines. Bronx Borough President Adolfo Carrion will be here to take your calls. As always, the number is 212 NY. I one talk. But first, Lewis Dotley will join us from the New York One newsroom with an update on all of our top stories and a check of the forecast. Stay with us.